Hello, my friends. Today we are going to read October part two of Because of Mr. Terrupt. And October starts today with Anna. I didn't want my plant to die. I didn't want to put it in the box. Everybody was staring at me. I started crying. Mr. Trepp took me out in the hall. Anna, what's wrong? I don't want to kill my plant. I blurted it out. My back slid down the wall and I put my head in my hands. We're not going to kill your plant. Mr. Trump knelt down in front of me. Yes, you are, I said. If we put it in the box, it's going to kill it. We'll take it out before it dies, he promised. No, I don't want to hurt it. Tell you what, Anna, let's do the experiments that are lined up for your plant. We have to because Danielle's your partner and she needs to do the science too. Then, when we're all done, I'll let you take my plant, our control, the one we don't do anything to. I still didn't like the idea of hurting my plant, but I liked the idea of getting the control. I think he saw my hesitation. Plus, since you're working with Danielle, I have a feeling that your plant is actually going to be just fine. I don't know Danielle that well. She's never been in my class before. She seems nice. I like her. Sometimes she's friends with Alexia. I don't know why. I'm glad I'm partners with Danielle and not Alexia. I've never been in Alexia's class, but I can tell she's mean. All the girls listen to her though. Katie, Emily, Heather, Natalie, all of them. Not me. I stay away from her. My mom has warned me not to get involved with the popularity stuff. She was ostracized, ostracized once. That means nobody wanted to be friends with her. My mom told me it was like there was a big group of people holding hands in a circle. She was never let in. She always had to stand outside the circle. Mom doesn't ever want that to happen to me. It was when she was 16 and pregnant with me. I can tell that she still hurts inside from all of it. Even her own parents shunned her. That's why she quit school shortly after I was born and moved out. She tried to move in with my dad. I've never met him, but that didn't work out. He left. Mom says we can talk about my dad and the whole situation when I'm older. All I know is that she says he's a nice man. My grandma and grandpa, I've never met them either, still don't want anything to do with us. They moved far away after my mom moved out. My mom might be young, but she's still a great mom. She's my best friend and I love her. If you love someone, you don't quit on them just because they make a mistake. Mr. Trump helped me stand up. Trust me on this one, he said. Be positive. We headed back into the classroom. My plant went into the box and came out a few days later, a little yellow and without a lot of new growth, but it was alive. Turning it on its side wasn't harmful, so I was okay with that test. And then it was our chance to feed it whatever we wanted. Mr. Terrupt was right. Danielle knew what she was doing. Here's a list of things we could mix together, Danielle said. I read the list. I didn't know everything on it. How did she? My grandmother helped me with it, she said. She's always been very good at growing things. She's the reason we have successful crops on the farm. Both of us brought in some of the ingredients. We mixed them together and fed our plant. Ours was the only one to survive. It turned really green and grew and grew and grew. I took the control home, but Danielle and I decided to leave our plant in school. We kept feeding it and everyone watched it grow. It grew almost to the ceiling, wrapping itself around the cords to the blinds all the way up. Then one day, it was knocked over. Somehow, our super duper plant fell off the windowsill. Nobody knows how it happened. I have a pretty good idea though. I bet Alexia did it because it happened when she was being nasty to Danielle. I'm thankful that Mr. Trump let me take the control home. I didn't want her to hurt that one too. I liked being Danielle's partner. I wonder now if Mr. Trump knew what he was starting between me and Danielle. I wonder. Next up is Jessica. Act two, scene one. My daily routine included lunch with Alexia and the girls, minus Danielle and Anna, they sat alone, and then recess. Alexia found it funny to see how upset Danielle would get. Right about this time, I was finishing the book, Belle Teal. I loved Belle. I wanted her to be my friend. She was honest and courageous. 
What would Belle do in my shoes? That was easy. She would do the right thing. And doing the right thing meant giving someone a chance. Danielle didn't seem anything like Alexia made her out to be. I decided it was time to talk to Danielle to find out for myself. Act two, scene two. I set out to find Danielle the next day at recess. I spotted her from a distance. She was drawing in the dirt with a stick. Hi, Danielle, I said as I approached, clutching my latest book where the red fern grows close to me. What do you want? She shot back, jabbing her stick into the hard ground, causing it to snap in half. She turned away. It sounded like she was crying. Are you okay? I walked closer. No, Lexi's being really mean to me and it's all your fault. She threw her sticks onto the ground. My fault? She blamed me? Why didn't I see it coming? It made perfect sense I was the new girl and my arrival pushed her out of the group. I'm sorry, I said. I stood there. I wanted to be back in California anyway. I missed my dad. Danielle began scratching pictures in the dirt with her finger. I'm sorry I said that, it's not your fault. I sat down. It's just that Lexi's ignoring me, talking about me, saying mean stuff. Danielle went on. She doesn't sit with me at lunch, she's not playing with me, and now all the other girls are doing the same thing. They always do that when Alexia says. Anna's the only one who's still nice, and I'm not even supposed to be friends with her. Why not? I asked. My family, especially my grandma, think she's a bad influence. I don't get it. My mom and dad used to be friends with her grandparents and, you mean her parents, I interrupted. No, her grandparents. Danielle stopped moving the dirt and sat up to explain. My mom and dad are 47. They had my older brother, Charlie, when they were 20. The same time Anna's grandparents had Anna's mother. They were all friends at church and that's how they knew each other. Charlie's 27, so Anna's mom must be 27 too. And Anna's 11? I said, quickly putting all the pieces together. So that means her mom was 16 when Anna was born? That's right, Danielle said. And that's why your family, especially your grandmother, thinks Anna will be, a will be a bad influence, I asked. Yes, Danielle said. I think they figure Anna will be like her mother. And that's not the type of people churchgoers should associate with. I didn't like what I was hearing. None of it seemed fair to Anna. But I wanted to learn more about her mother's story. What happened after Anna was born? I'm not sure, Danielle said. I just know that it's only Anna and her mother now. None of that's her fault. I said matter-of-factly. Danielle nodded. She bent forward and started drawing in the dirt again. I decided not to push it anymore. She seemed upset by it, too. I'll play with you, I said. You will? A hint of a smile spread its way across Danielle's dirt-streaked, teary face. Sure, and I won't listen to Alexia. I slid where the red fern grows off to the side and dug into the earth with my finger. I know that book. My grandma read it to me. It's a very good book, I said. Everybody always likes a character with a dog. That's something my dad told me. It's a sad story, Danielle said, but I won't tell you what happens. Please don't, we could talk about it when I'm done though. Sure, she said, shrugging her shoulders. We sat next to each other, scratching pictures in the dirt until the whistle sounded. Recess was over. We stood and brushed ourselves off. That was when I saw Danielle's dirt sketch of two dogs. That's a great picture, Danielle. Thanks, she said. I liked Danielle. There were a lot of interesting things to learn about her, I could tell. I grabbed my book and we headed toward the building. Then I saw Anna wandering over by herself. I wondered if she wanted to be a loner or did she want friends? Why did she try so hard to be invisible? Was she embarrassed by her family situation? And how many people actually knew all that stuff about her mother? Act two, scene three. I was walking with Danielle when all of a sudden she rushed ahead and hurried inside. Looking up, I found out why. Alexia was right in my face. Like, what are you doing? I thought I told you not to be friends with her. Alexia's head jerked from side to side as she talked. It reminded me of a bobblehead. She blocked my way, her hands on her cheetah patterned hips. There's nothing wrong with Danielle. Besides, I can play with whomever I want, I said. Fine, then like, you're not my friend anymore, Alexia said. She knocked where the red fern grows out of my hands. Then she whipped around and stomped inside. I wasn't upset, but I'm not stupid either. I knew Alexia was going to make my life miserable. That was her game and she was good at it too. Still, I had no clue how bad things would really get. Alexia. 
I saw Jessica talking to Danielle. I saw them playing. That double crossing, no good, miss perfect from California. She was gonna get it. I went right up to her after recess and smacked her stupid book out of her hands. Who did she think she was, messing things up? Couldn't let her stand up to me and get away with it. Then somebody else might think they could do that too. I wasn't about to let that happen. Nobody messes with Alexia. Then I had to deal with Danielle. I caught up to her and followed her into the bathroom. I was like, what are you doing? She backed up to the stall. Nothing, what's wrong? I was like, you're crazy to be friends with a new girl. I told you, she's been saying nasty stuff about you. How you smell like the farm. And now she just said, who's bigger, Danielle or the cows? Now Danielle was crying, score. I hugged her. I was like, we've been friends for a long time, Danielle, since second grade. We don't need her. She's still crying. I hugged her again. I was thinking, this will teach you to mess with me, Miss Perfect. I let go of Danielle and walked over and stood in front of the mirror. I fixed the scrunchie in my hair and readjusted my scarf. I reapplied some princess pink lip gloss. I was like, don't you worry, Danielle, we'll get her. Next up is Danielle. Whoops. I ended up talking and playing with Jessica at recess. My troubles with Lexi weren't her fault. I told Jessica about Anna. Jessica thought Anna seemed nice, which was true. Anna was my science partner for the plant unit and I liked working with her. You stay away from that girl, you hear me? Grandma said when I first mentioned Anna's, Anna's name at home. Your grandmother's right, Danielle. That girl comes from a bad family, Mom said. She'll be a bad influence. I wanted to know why. So Grandma filled me in on Anna's family story. I just listened, but I couldn't help thinking about the Anna I knew. She didn't seem bad at all. In fact, I already liked her. I wanted her to be my friend. I figured that as long as I wasn't going over to her house, I could be friends with Anna in school. Before long, it was time to head inside. I walked alongside Jessica until I saw Lexi marching toward us. She had a mean scowl on her face. She looked mad, real mad, like a mama cow determined to keep you away from your new calf. I rushed ahead. I didn't want to fight. I felt bad for leaving Jessica behind, but I wanted to avoid Lexi. I hurried inside and hid in the bathroom, but Lexi found me. The bathroom door flew open and she got right in my face. She told me all the mean things Jessica was saying about me. Like, you can even ask Katie or Emily. They'll tell you, Little Miss California is a two-face. Nice to your face and mean behind it. You need to stay away from her. I started crying. Why would Jessica say those mean things? Lexi hugged me for a second, but it didn't make me feel any better. Then she walked toward the sinks. She stood in front of the mirror fixing herself. I sat in one of the stalls, wiping my tears. Like, you know what else? Lexi said. Jessica's the one who killed your plant. Like, she knocked it over on purpose. She told me. I've known Lexi since second grade, when she was all nice. She even came over to my house once that spring, but her feather boas weren't a good match for my farm, so she had never been back. And then in third grade, she started with her mean games, so I've never been to her house. We're friends in school when Lexi says so, and that's it. Grandma says something's going on with Lexi that we don't know about and that it's best, not to, it's best not to worry about being her friend. But I did worry. What was the truth? Was there anyone I could be friends with? Dear God, it's Danielle. I'm gonna need your help sorting all this girl stuff out. I hope you don't mind. I'd rather not get grandma involved. She doesn't always understand. Thanks, amen. And that is the end of October. Next time we will read November. All right, guys, work hard, and I will talk to you later.